Hey, Glenn. Are you buried in snow like I am? <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. It's still snowing. It snowed here, but it, only, it was only like like an inch or two. It was nothing. I got uh, snow up to my hips overnight uh, wow. two days ago, and I've been throwing it off on the side, which is over my head. <laughs> <laughs> You're basically digging yourself a hole. That's that's all I've been doing is digging snow. That's it, man, you could use a snowblower. That's. I used to have one. I may even have it buried under things. <laughs> <that's dry. laughs> Yeah. Well, I we'll have to wait till the summer to find out. Wow. What's well, happening? Um, I know I've I've just been thinking about stuff we talked about in the past and um applying that to what I'm learning seeing today. Yeah. And I remember uh you, you taught me about the uh the MO of uh, the system whenever they're about to do a mass murder or something like that they they always kill their friends first and then they kill uh their enemies. They get rid of their enemies. Well, their friends normally uh, are are the most dangerous, and uh, if you're looking for the friends of the system, you have to look to first responders who will come and save the people when they are being attacked. Uh, it's the first responders. So if they get rid of them first, Mm -hmm. then the attack will be successful against the next guy. I was thinking of uh, the people that are being uh, discredited and and possibly going to be executed. these days and um with the, all these trials and stuff and I mean one of the people I'm seeing who is being uh <coughs> inve- uh they're trying to get an investigation or is uh, you know Hillary Clinton and the whole gang and I was thinking these would be people who you know they helped at least with building um, a lot of, um, you know, setting the system up. And um, I was also thinking about how this, uh, there is um, a politician from New York, a young, she's one of the, possibly the youngest, she's a Puerto Rican lady, um, and she introduced, like, they used her to introduce a bill, and widely it was uh, ridiculed and uh, made fun of because it didn't make any uh, sense. Like it, was, it sounded very impractical. And I was thinking, I, I said, right now on the media, I mean, why would they introduce something so ridiculous? And right in the media is making fun of it, but at least a a majority of people are rejecting it. But I thought to myself, I said, what circumstance would have to be introduced for people to consider this thing? And the only thing (laughs) I could think of is the Lou at the Sioux. Yeah. Uh, People will start accepting well, the the options are disappearing daily, you know. So 
uh, Lou at the Sioux was and is, I guess, something that was designed for uh, the major flushing of the toilet, the cleansing, uh, normally comes after everything else. So uh, creation, apparently in discussion with the cell through whatever way they discuss things, said that there was no obvious solution to cleansing the people without a flood, a major flood. But uh, a flood takes care of those people who are the most um, likely to cause a problem. Border guards, police, uh, taxation people, uh, refugee status people, and and as I was telling Jennifer yesterday, that the Lou at the Sioux can probably kill millions of people, but the gas that follows will kill tens of millions of people. So you start by getting rid of the ones that are the biggest problem on the front line, but as a result of that, things spread out from the front line. And it's it's certainly not what creation would have preferred, but options are disappearing. And that's the time we're spending now is to try and identify solutions. But every place you turn is corrupt. And it's corrupt defended by the system. Hmm. Bureaucrats in every area have taken control of what was supposed to be helpful to the citizens and taxpayers of the country. But in fact, what they've done is position themselves for drug peddling, human smuggling, corruption, false billing like from Hydro and Bell. So how do you cleanse when they're all in the position of power? Well, that's, that's what I thought of Trump, um, well, his, at least in America, where his role was. Well, he may have been one of the options to uh, cleansing, but, you know, whether or not he gets it done in four years or reelected after his term is over. What is it, six years for a president? I think it's four years, and then... It's four yeah. years. Then he gets another four if he's reelected. Eight years. Yeah. Huh? So, so, he's certainly uh, got a lot of opposition, much of it of his own making. <laughs> Well, Whether but, much of it that appears to be bad in reality is a cleansing of the system that had been set up by the Democrats prior. And, and no Republican president would have 
changed anything. So an independent may have had a, a chance. We'll see. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm watching. I mean, did you hear? Um, it's it's talked about in, I guess, the alternative communities, but on the news for I guess a couple of weeks now. There was a guy in Chicago who uh, did like a false, uh, he engineered a, a false uh, hate crime. Yeah, and, I I didn't read the details, but I saw the headlines. Yeah, and people who investigate their finding, uh, he had connections to Obama and Kamala Harris. Yeah. And... As soon as this thing came out, you know, a lot of those Democratic leaders would said that uh, were very, became very vocal about it, and Kamala Harris in particular said that this was modern day lynching, and um, because of her statements, she, uh, they, they were able to push um, a, a, a lynching bill. They, they basically an anti-lynching bill to make it a federal crime. And I heard, uh, I saw in the alternative communities, these uh, people who listened to uh, Q and on, they said something like, um, they said, is it a coincidence that what the penalty for treason is, uh, is hanging? And so it suggested that they um, passed this bill and engineered this whole thing to uh, to protect themselves when they're um, gets brought to court and tried for treason. It's all exposed. But, um, no, I'll guarantee you one thing. When you're the one targeted, being hung or electrocuted, <laughs> ain't much difference in the end. Yeah, I did think that. I was thinking that too. But I, do you? I, I have a question. Do you have? Um, is the what's the? I know it can't be a coincidence because. And um, in a short span of time between each other, I think like a day or two, or maybe the same day, there were these two women, one woman in the U.K., one woman in the U.S., who uh, left the U.S., and they, I guess, I think they went to Syria or something, and joined uh, ISIS to fight uh, their, uh, on the side of ISIS. And... Um, now they're both returning to the the country that they were born in, the U.S. and the U.K., and they want to be brought back, and people, uh, they're being rejected, and it's like the news is making uh, stories out of these. Now, is there a, a, an allegory or a symbol or... A meaning? Why would they have these two women? Supposedly? Well, I know one of them has a child. I don't know about the other one. The uh, the British one has a child. Yeah. Um, and uh, they they insist. Well, you know, the child didn't do anything to get into the mess it's in, and. Uh, uh, who knows uh, what's in the mind of the person that authorizes the the British guy says it's dangerous to go there to recuperate somebody who's been a traitor to uh, England um, and endanger the lives of the military that go in and that he would never authorize 
such a uh, a rescue. She wanted to join. Let her stay there. (laughs) Now, one of the guys that uh, used to appear on TV to say that, you know, somebody would be uh, uh, beheaded or whatever is Canadian. (laughs) What? And he says, well, he never did anything. He just spoke on television. And they said, aiding and abetting. He's another one who wants to come home. Oh, is that the one with the Trudeau? I think I did hear about that. People people were saying that he supports terrorists or something like that. Yeah. Now that's interesting. Like, what, it's three people now from yeah. ISIS or whatever they want to come back to their countries, their birth countries. That that yeah. there has to be something behind that. Well, ISIS no longer controls any territory in the region, so they're basically stuck in a uh, Kurdish prison camp oh. where where supplies are not uh, very good. The Kurds uh, fought a war against ISIS. They, they're not going to go hungry in order to feed these prisoners. You know? oh. But again, always when you look at prison camps, they bring up the matter of children without ever having the thought that these children are genetically engineered to carry certain DNA that will grow up to be an adult and do whatever they were programmed to do. Children are not children any more than kittens are cute all their lives, you know. If if the whole process was to infiltrate the homelands that these people went to be genetically engineered and bring back the child, then why should anybody bring them back home? Mind you, the people that sent that that went there were already programmed when they were in the homeland before they left. Yeah. They were just getting a refill. <laughs> <laughs> there are not very many people in the world that are able to think beyond what the media says, whether it be mainstream media or the internet. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's so true, Glenn. I I see that daily. Yeah, there are not too many. And I suspect it's, you know, part of old programming like uh, like we've discussed how Caucasian were designed at least the first batch were designed to they couldn't see outside of reading a book that that told them what to do they couldn't and I'm sure that's that's probably linked to to that Um, well if you if you live in New York and you have a governing family by the name of Como, and you go back in their history to the great-grandmother of the current politicians, uh, she came out of nowhere. 
she wasn't from any uh, existing family. She was uh, the equivalent of a uh, streetwalker. Uh, 80 years ago. Now, she started a dynasty from what? From genetically engineered DNA, which would mean that four generations later, 80 to 100 years, any child being born to a governor of New York is related to that woman and has the DNA that she carried. Now, this is not my invention. That's the history of the Como family as they talk about it without realizing what they're saying. A dynasty starts someplace, and it usually carries the DNA throughout. And if you look at ancient Chinese dynasties, uh, people who were the marauders over Asia thousand years ago have uh, left their DNA in something like 10% or 15% of Asians. Mm -hmm. There was a uh, um, quote-unquote normal activity in Asia that uh, when a trader came to the east from the west, going from Europe into Greece and Turkey, and then on into China, that the normal welcoming given to that trader was the wives of the guys who wanted the business would sleep with the the visitor. The one who did the best job, the husband got the business. They didn't call them husbands at the time. They just lived together, you know. Well, um, I was talking with me and Dana with, 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 with uh, actually, by the way, Dana, Dana's on the line. I don't know if, uh. That's okay. Hi, Dana. Hey there. So, me and Dana were talking to, um, uh, uh, a guy we, a guy we talked to for a little while now, lives in, uh, Europe. And we were having a discussion about how, about like, just in this subject topic that we talk about, meeting uh, uh, certain people, I guess, meeting strange people, like, and I was trying to explain how you can't, you got to be cautious, I guess, when you're meeting uh, certain people do, concerning this topic because not everyone has your best interest in mind. And, you know, you got to think about, like, the actions, like what what could, could be the implications of uh, uh, your actions. Like, I learned when I was up there with you, like, I don't know if you remember when you went to the bank. Yeah. And I made that mistake. That yeah. was... um. You got to think about 
even people who will come in your direction, I'm sure I'm not saying person should just not talk to black people off, but I guess be cautious, like, because it's happened to you. I see over the years, like, the people who sabotage your computer, these are people who let into your home, your life, and they made a decision to, I guess, harm or try to hinder what you're doing. So how would you deal, how, how do, what would be your advice, I guess, dealing with um, people? I guess you just give them a shot, and if they... Exactly. <laughs> it's always been my preference is take nobody's opinion about other people's intent. Give them every opportunity to show through their own actions whose side they're on and then make your long-term decisions. That still doesn't guarantee you, but it's the best there is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember getting an email, and I told you about this email that I got from somebody. And the email, the location of the person was in, like, the same area of... uh, these engineers, do you remember that? Yeah. And I think it's just stuff like that, but I try to, I'm cautious <laughs> of, you know, mm-hmm. strange uh, people. <laughs> and I, we, I had this discussion with uh, your wife, me and Dana were talking about it, like how, like, she was saying, like, I, I, so many people in this conspiracy community, you find out that they're like an agent or something for the system. Yeah. You know? So, but I guess those are the people you want to reach, right? To let them know that. Well, that, that... yeah, there is there is no certainty in anything that deals with integrity only the actions of the person until they show differently you accept that face value but once they start showing that there is a concern about who they really are you uh, you have to go by what you see Oh. I, I mean, I've had communications with the cell. Mm-hmm. I can tell you about my communications with the cell, but that doesn't mean you know what I'm saying is true. <laughs> yep. You know, you only have my actions over the years on which to make a judgment. Am I a person who tends to exaggerate or lie or whatever? Or is what I was saying the first day you met me the same as what you're hearing now? Just anything that added to what I was saying is added as I go along. Well, I, what I find with you, I find you're you're basically saying the same thing. It's just you've learned more, and it's that's the only change that you you've learned more. So, no. the story, the basic story, is still the same, but certain facts are included. Which, yeah, well, until somebody else shows me that there is something new, I don't add it. But once they do, I test it out and uh, make decisions from there. Uh. Uh. All right.
Well, well, Dana. I don't know about you guys, but I came in for lunch, and now I got to go back and shovel snow. That sucks. Man. That's. But how many hours a day are you shoveling the snow? About five now. Shit. Normally, I could do it. Uh, what it needs to be done in three, but. I I didn't do every aspect of what needed to be done for where I wanted to go. Um, Every day, I I did always, you know, allowing vehicles to come in, cleaning the area around the mailbox. Uh, That's the the primary aspect. Uh, And then... When it didn't snow two or three days in a row, then I would get to clean the paths out to the field and to the house and that kind of stuff one at a time. And uh, right now, uh, I have been told by uh, Kim in Moosonee that he has a friend that's in the Ontario Provincial Police who he's given information to and has uh, uh, apparently taken up my case and they've made contacts with the Provincial Member of Parliament for this area uh, to try to get them to explain why they haven't done anything about 78-year-old guy with no electricity for three years by hydro when the law states that if you cut off electricity, you must leave 15% running so the people don't die. And they have never done that here in this case. I don't know about other places in the province. And uh, I was asked to call the member of parliament's office, which I I did so that they got the, uh, the information directly from me. However, uh, Jennifer has been giving them information on almost a weekly basis for the last three, four years, and and they're acting as if this is something new, you know. So I've got to apparently uh, make sure that uh, when a hydro person is sent. Uh-huh. that I allow them in, which without that acknowledgement from the politicians, I would not have let them in. And that person has to investigate the damage done to the house uh, before any hydro would be put in and in my case, can't do it. You can't put hydro to the house after the plugs in the basement have been underwater three or four times a year for three years. Uh, So I got to clean out a place for that vehicle that they're going to send to come in and uh, paths around the house that I wouldn't normally clean out, I have to do. So I got snow in some places up to my head. And uh, most of the places, it's more around the knee. Uh, But it's heavy stuff when it starts off you know, five, six feet tall and compresses down to two feet 
it's heavy stuff. So I, I can shovel for five hours and do approximately what I would have done in an hour under normal circumstances that just snows and you remove it. Here it snows and snows and snows (laughs) and and compresses and uh, freezing rain at different levels. So... And you, that's you, what I'm doing these days is uh, putting in about five, sometimes six hours, and then I'm exhausted, and uh, my my brain doesn't think right, so I have to eat and get under some blankets. Not that uh, it it's cold uh, outside. It's more the reverse is that even when it's uh, 10 below, I'm sweating. And then, of course, the minute I stop, the uh, sweat freezes me. And the house is always colder than outdoors. If I didn't have a blanket to get underneath, uh, I wouldn't be able to sleep without freezing. I was going to ask you, because you don't have are all the days cold. You don't have, like, hot days, like, uh, like warmer days, because just the other day it was like... Well, like, yeah, that's, was, I wear what I have, and... And it suits the purpose while I'm working, uh-huh. but I got to take it off immediately after I'm finished day's work because it's soaking wet on the inside, yeah. and it's going to freeze before I get back to working again. So it, it's because I have a lot of clothes that I'm able to do it, but I can't wear it twice. Got to be washed in between. I don't think how to solve that that problem. Uh, well, uh, there's one way to solve it: fifteen degrees above zero. <laughs> Is the electricity? Get it, get it done. This has been the worst winter that I can remember. And at 78 attempts at winter, I know the difference. <laughs> yeah. Do you think the, the weather has been manipulated purposely? Yeah. You see... I have an advantage over you. I know how they manipulate the language to put the coding in it. Uh And when they say Mother Nature, well, then I know that the word nature starts with ant. You are ant. So Mother Nature is not some mysterious weather pattern that just evolves it it is manufactured through uh, tunnels in the moho discontinuity that lead from uh, one volcano to another all over the world and they took somewhere around 32,000 years to to make it happen. There was a basic structure, but then they needed to expand it to bring uh, the flow of lava to the areas where they wanted it. And the flow of lava causes the warming of the ocean if the volcano is underwater, and that then will start a system which will affect the atmosphere and move because they've done it long enough 
in the direction that they want it to move out of the Indian Ocean. That's where it all begins. And either up the Atlantic or Pacific Oceans and then last a certain length of time and move at a certain speed and come out and affect the places they want to affect. Now, if you had spent 32,000 years planning this, uh, you would have it down pat. And that's why when you're underground, at the mantle where there is an ant and you're hiding, you're manufacturing, you are mother nature. Nature is ant, you are. Yes, you are. They, they can send a, uh, a hurricane or or uh, earthquake or whatever you want anywhere in the world so yeah by by saying the word ant in the word nature is suggesting that it begins with them right? yeah like yeah like engineer it every, every. Oh. yeah it begins with them the ones in hiding the ones with the queen. Now, it is my view, and I haven't been told. Hello? Yeah, I didn't know if you were calling back or not. Yeah, I uh, I guess, if you, did your battery die or? No, it just shut off. I guess, uh, People who are listening in were afraid of what I was about to say. Well, I remember exactly where you left off. You said it's your view, and you haven't been told, and then it cut off. Yeah, that India is Mother Nature. The government of India is the main contact with the underground. And that's why people who came to North America first were, before anybody ever suspected that it was a code, were called Indians. And the Indian Ocean is the only place you can control nature from the beginning. And whether you call them Indians or you say uh, Indiana or Indianapolis 500, the last 500 years have been controlled by Indians. And if you call them, as they love to be called today, indigenous, it's still India. There's a lot of connections in that, and, and just those words you use, like indigenous, is linked to us, Sue, and and uh, Neanderthal is Dean, Dean, and the French word for me, uh, Janou. You have the soul, the uh, foot, the knee, all perform different functions until they get to the hip. Hip, hip, uh, hip hooray. That's what they say. <laughs> yeah. Hip. Hip, hip, Hippocratic. Oh, yeah. Hippopotamus. I'm seeing hypocrites. Yeah, that's that's very common. Yeah. Anyways, guys, I gotta go. 
if I'm going to get a little more work in, I got at least a longer day than usual. Not up to six o'clock yet. Well, Glenn, 